Imagine this. It is drizzling rain at night. You glaze over to the book that has been sitting on your nightstand for weeks. You make yourself a warm cup of cocoa, sit on the porch and begin to read. Suddenly, you sense two or three mosquitoes lurking around your legs. Sooner than you realize, you are under a mosquito attack. You have forgotten all about the book and instead, you are prancing around, trying to kill those nasty blood-sucking insects. You are transported from a state of serenity to a nearly neurotic one. How can we kill these annoying blood-sucking insects? I think a majority of people will agree that mosquitoes are a loathsome group of insects. Their constant buzzing of wings is extremely infuriating. They leave our bodies with red, itchy patches. It seems as though nature created them just to mess with us. So why can we not just kill them all? Why haven't we already? Let's suppose that getting rid of all the sleazy, irritating insects that are... Mosquitoes is a good idea. How might we do it? Before you grab that can of bug spray, know this. While some mosquitoes are dangerous to us, not all are. Even those that are sometimes harmful tend not to feed on humans, preferring honeydew, plant sap, and nectar, according to Mosquito Joe, a mosquito control company. There are around 3,500 mosquito species, but only around 100 will potentially bite and spread disease to humans. Stephen Sinkins, a professor in microbiology and tropical medicine. For instance, Culicetta mosquitoes often bite humans, but are not known to carry any debilitating diseases, while Toxorhynchites, which are common the world over and tend to live in forests, prefer nectar sugars to blood, according to Entomology Today. Therefore, it probably wouldn't be necessary to get rid of every mosquito species. Instead, we could target the more problematic ones, such as Aedes aegypti, which carry diseases such as yellow fever and Zika. A. aegypti is now ubiquitous, but it wasn't always this way. The species first spread out of Africa during the slave trade between the 15th and 19th centuries, through trade with Asia in the 18th and 19th centuries, and via troop movements during World War II, according to the World Mosquito Program, a nonprofit based in Australia. Other mosquitoes that are dangerous to humans include certain types of Anopheles and Culex, as these carry a host of diseases including malaria, dengue, West Nile fever, yellow fever, Zika, chikungunya, and lymphatic filariasis, according to Understanding Animal Research. The latter condition is often known as elephantiasis, which can cause painful swelling in the lymph system, especially in the legs, arms, or genitalia. If humans decide to selectively eliminate disease-carrying mosquitoes, there are a few options. One such targeted solution involves releasing mosquitoes carrying Wolbachia bacteria, which, according to Sinkins, is a strategy already being used to control dengue. This involves breeding mosquitoes so that they carry Wolbachia, which is not dangerous to humans, and then placing them into disease-prone areas. In mosquitoes such as Aedes aegypti that carry Wolbachia, the bacteria makes it difficult for viruses to reproduce, according to the World Mosquito Program. As a result, it's less likely that mosquitoes carrying Wolbachia will spread harmful viruses to people they bite for a blood meal. This type of strategy could eventually block the transmission of diseases, which could effectively make mosquitoes harmless, Sinkin said. Another method involves releasing genetically modified mosquitoes whose offspring do not survive. But what if it weren't possible to target problematic species? Sinkins admitted that though focusing on select species could eventually become a viable and cost-effective solution, a lot of research is still needed to determine how feasible this will be. Sinkins also noted that the approach would have to be tailored by continent, as different mosquito species spread malaria in Africa, Asia, and South America. So what if we instead chose the scorched earth approach and killed them all? What would the consequences be? The simple answer is we're not sure. We don't yet know what the knock-on impact on the ecosystem would be. Evidence is scarce, said Thomas Churcher, an epidemiologist, entomologist, and mathematical modeler at Imperial College London, who is working to understand the best way to kill mosquitoes. However, given mosquitoes are a primary food source for numerous animals, including bats, birds, frogs, fish, and dragonflies, it's likely there would be at least some ecological impacts, at least in the short term. Dragonflies, for example, are often known as mosquito hawks, owing to their ability to eat as many as 100 mosquitoes in a single day. It's likely they, as well as a host of other critters, would, at the very least, have to change their diets somewhat. However, despite this lack of consequential clarity, Sinkins and Churcher agree that if it became possible to kill off every mosquito capable of transmitting malaria and other diseases, 
Even if it also meant wiping out all mosquitoes that aren't dangerous to humans, they would support the idea. Sinkins is confident that eradicating disease-transmitting mosquitoes would prevent hundreds of thousands of malaria deaths every year and would ultimately wipe out malaria entirely. Churcher agreed that if such an opportunity were to present itself, it would, without doubt, be the right decision to kill all mosquitoes. It is nice to dream about a world without mosquitoes, a phenomenon that Hawaii experienced until 1826, when a foreign ship introduced the mosquito Culex quinquefasciatus to the archipelago, according to the Hawaii Invasive Species Council. But for places where mosquitoes live and thrive, which is everywhere in the world aside from Antarctica and Iceland, their absence could cause a rift in the ecosystem, though to what extent it's difficult to say. Many mosquito species are important components of ecological food webs and do not pose any threat to humans, said Churcher. They are an impressively successful group. However, if you are absolutely determined to live in a world without mosquitoes, your best bet is probably relocating to Iceland. Just remember to keep your eyes peeled for polar bears when you get there. Do we need to kill all the mosquitoes? No, because not all are bad. Mosquitoes are a fly in the family Colicidae, and there are over 3,500 species of them. The females lay eggs usually in still water, anything from a shallow pond to a flower pot or bird bath or puddle. The larvae live in the water, eating microbes and small particles or algae. They pupate in the water, and the adult mosquito eventually emerges from the water surface and flies off. What do adult mosquitoes eat? Most are vegetarian. They drink flower nectar, plant sap, and fruit juices, and never drink blood. Killing these species is not necessary. In fact, it's counterproductive. The more than 90 species of one such harmless genus, Toxorhynchites, also known as the elephant mosquito, because of their great size, are an ally to our cause. Their larvae eat other mosquito larvae. Since they are helpful, we should make sure any strategies we use to kill bad mosquitoes will leave these gentle giants alone. Of the mosquitoes that do suck blood, only a few, 200 or so, feed on humans. Others only feed from birds or lizards or smaller mammals, and many of those that do bite humans would prefer feeding on something else. Of those that can feed on humans, not all carry human diseases, and even in the species that do, not all strains are efficient vectors. Also, different species carry certain diseases. For example, plasmodium, the protozoan parasite that causes malaria, is spread almost exclusively by mosquitoes in the genus Anopheles. Of the about 460 species of Anopheles mosquito, only 100 or so can actually carry the 5 or so species of plasmodium that infect humans, out of over 200 species of plasmodium that infect other animals. Of this 100, only 3 or 4 dozen are good enough vectors to pose a risk to humans, and only a handful of these actually prefer humans as a blood source, and only 5 carry plasmodium falciparum, the one species of malaria responsible for the worst symptoms and most deaths. Of these, the worst is Anopheles gambiae, although this is technically a species complex of at least seven different species, but that's another story. In summary, if you want to destroy malaria, there are only a few species that matter the most, and focusing on an gambiae is the priority. Killing this one species complex alone would save millions. A few other genera carry other disease agents, namely arboviruses, short for arthropod-borne viruses. Many species in the genus Aedes, but especially Aedes aegypti and Ae. Albopictus vector arboviruses such as dengue virus, yellow fever virus, Zika virus, chikungunya virus, West Nile virus, lacrosse virus, and some animal viruses such as Western equine encephalomyelitis virus. Many of these viruses are also spread by species in the genus Culex, which also spreads bird malaria, and the genus Culicetta, which rarely bites humans, and Oclerotatus, the genus Haemagogus spreads yellow fever and some rarer viruses called Mayaro and Ilhaeus viruses. The genus Mansansia can spread some arboviruses but are more important for spreading roundworms that cause filiariasis in Asia and the Pacific. The other genera also have roundworm vectoring species, responsible for the spread of heartworm in dogs and other animals and lymphatic filiariasis and elephantitis in humans. Why are some species better vectors than others? The answer is because mosquitoes don't just carry diseases, they get sick from them. When the mosquito swallows infected blood, its own midgut gets infected. The pathogens replicate in the midgut and burst out into the body cavity where they eventually infect the salivary glands. The whole process takes up to two weeks depending on the disease. When mosquitoes bite their next victim, the pathogen is injected with the saliva. 
This is one reason why HIV, the virus that causes AIDS, is not vectored by mosquitoes. It cannot infect the mosquito midgut and just gets digested away. Different mosquito species may be immune to certain pathogens, have resistant midguts or resistant salivary glands, or may simply die of natural causes before the pathogen can complete its replication cycle and reach the salivary glands. Infected mosquitoes do sometimes have shorter lifespans, so evolution keeps the diseases in check. They cannot kill the mosquito before they've finished incubating and have been injected into a new host. In summary, we don't need to kill all the mosquitoes, just the vector species. Why do mosquitoes even exist? It is plausible to refer to mosquitoes as one of the most brutal contenders of nature. They have survived many predators and environmental changes. They are present globally, except in Antarctica. There are about 3,000 species of mosquitoes, out of which roughly 100 or so are the disease carriers like malaria, dengue, yellow fever, and chikungunya viruses. Out of those 100, the females essentially spread the diseases as they feed on blood, while the males strictly feast on the nectar of flowers. So getting rid of all of them is a nonsensical idea. Several species of mosquitoes have valuable biological purposes. They help to pollinate flowers while feeding on nectar. They are a critical source of food for many animals in both larva and adult forms. Arctic inhabiting mosquitoes fly around in thick swarms and make a huge part of the biomass. They pollinate the local plants and are a prominent food source for migrating birds. Removing them could send a ripple through their ecosystem and endanger several plants and animals. Moreover, climate change is increasing the number of mosquitoes. It is also driving them to become the primary food source for several animals as they are common and easy to find. Actually, some mosquitoes are helpful. The first problem to tackle here is the word all. There are more than 3,000 recognized mosquito species worldwide. And each one of those mosquitoes is very different in terms of their ecology, the places that they exist, if they bite people, if they bite frogs, or if they bite birds, notes Kristen Healy, an assistant professor in the Department of Entomology at Louisiana State University. So their whole ecological cycle is very different depending on the mosquitoes we're talking about. Given this diversity, there are a lot of ecological cycles. In other words, the relationships between species and their environment to consider. Healy, who is also president of the American Mosquito Control Association, offered Louisiana, which is home to many swamps where mosquitoes thrive, as an example. Those mosquitoes might serve an excellent purpose in, you know, the ecology of those swamp life cycles and feeding fish and other small invertebrates in the aquatic system. And maybe there's other small animals that might feed on the adults, mosquitoes. Other mosquitoes might play similar roles in their native habitats, so complete eradication could end up having some adverse effects. On top of that, experts say it's unlikely we'd be able to totally exterminate all mosquitoes given their massive, think hundreds of billions, and widespread population. But we don't necessarily have to get rid of all mosquitoes. It turns out the species we're most familiar with, the ones causing all those itchy red bumps as well as the more notorious diseases, are few in number. 